I beat the big boy dragon Devalin himself with only a level 1 Dia. Just because this oversized lizard existed ever since 1.0, that doesn't mean you should underestimate his power. He's still got well over 200,000 HP, he's still strong enough to kill us in two shots, and he's got a secret timer that counts down to our inevitable demise if we're not fast enough. Still, I'm not backing down from a potential victory, and from the massive reputation my last Dia vs the World video got, which thank you all for that, I've got to keep the series alive somehow. If you're new around here, here are the rules. Our level 1 Dia is the the only thing that can enter this domain. This time, she's not getting any help. She can't eat any food, drink any potions, and she must have the same loadout for the whole fight. Same weapon, same artifact, and same sliver of hope. We're only counting this as a victory once Storm Terror reclaims his former glory. But it won't be that hard, surely. Right? I mean, all we gotta do is... Oh no. Before we begin, here are a few of you viewers that I want to shout out. If you want to have a chance of being up here, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll be sure not to do repeats. First off, what are we going to equip her with? Before, we've made liberal use of the Shimanawa set, and that was what I was going to use, but then I found this out. Yeah, for some reason, Devalin doesn't count as a thing enough to proc Dia's field shots, so we're unable to generate any particles. But if we can't get energy, we can't sustain the damage bonus from the four-piece set. We can get energy from straight hitting Devalin, but that gets like measly amounts. Yeah, I'll see you again when the energy's full which will be basically never. We've used Marsh say Hunters before, but that was with our tussle with Scaramouche. At least he was generous enough to give us healing pads and teal chip damage with his elemental floor. Yes, a level 90 boss still has the capacity to hit like a baby too, but the only damaging floor we've got actually matters. By the way, did you know that the cracked platforms actually deal more damage the longer you stay in it? Like the number actually gets bigger, the more you know. So if it's not Shimanawa, if it's not Marsh say, then what? Wait. We'll use the power of friendship. Yo! Yeah, we're taking both of them. Their two-piece sets are pretty powerful in their own right, and since I actually have characters built for those sets, I don't really need to do the extra farming. Sorry, Gladiator's Finale, but other than my benched Ayato, you're not getting much use. In hindsight, though, if you do have a good Gladiators, use that instead. And for weapons, what else other than Dia's signature? Yes, there's still a problem of not being able to hit Devon with her elemental skill, losing out on the permanent 20% attack boost, but at least the initial cast and the follow-up hit can still give us that juice. Besides, am I really going to bring back the Fav Claim more after the last expedition. Nuh uh. And now it's time to tackle the big blue bird himself. We've always brushed off this boss as a pushover, and I completely agree with you on a normal day. But when the strongest hit you've got is a 2.5k finisher, your perspective shifts quite a lot. For one, his shield is a lot harder to break now. With 400,000 HP to blow through before actually getting to Devalin himself, we're in for a long ride. Luckily, he exposes himself to attacks quite often and for long periods of time. But this brings our second nitpick. He's still a big boss. His attacks are huge, long-lasting, and unfair. Really unfair. Considering he's been around for four years now, you already know how to dodge his attacks. Dash past his head swipes, stand at the edge during his claw scratches, sorry, I'm not bold enough to dodge like a normal person, and huddle the talent that he doesn't start blasting with his bad breath. He will move over to attack you, so just play the safe game and stand away. You're already dealing minimal damage, might as well go all out for stalling. Once you swooned him with your... Pudding Riz. <laughs> He goes down and you can start getting in some real damage. Even when he's literally unconscious, there's still some strategies you can use to squeeze out as much damage as possible. You need to realize that he only gives you like 15 seconds to attack, so it's imperative you attack fast. You can climb his neck with only one jump if you space it right. Aim for this spot on his neck. Running jump onto Devalin, then launch yourself upwards. It's still pretty tight, two left and you need two jumps, but two right and you get stuck on the scruff of his neck. But after some practice, you'll learn to mantle him in no time. Now that you're on him, what's the most amount of damage you can do. Well, if you got up in one jump, you'll have just enough time to get out the following combo. First, cast your elemental skill. While it still can't proc its field shots even now in Devalin's weak spot, hitting him with that first hit still gives you your 20% attack boost. Then do three normal attack strings all the way through, dash in between each one. If you do it right, you'll notice the finisher on the third attack string will do less than the first two and that's because the attack buff ran out. Don't fear, for instead of dashing, you can cast your elemental skill again to keep up the damage as well as refresh that buff. From there, do one more attack string. At this at this point, Devalin should be getting up at any moment, so dash up to the base of his neck, then plunge. If you time it right, you'll hit him with the coming down hit, then the shockwave at the end, finishing the damage with a crisp attack. If you do everything correctly, you'll be able to deal... 
what is that, a sixth of his HP? Well, that's all you'll need, but you'll need to sustain this for the next five times, or else things get really messy. If you're enjoying this so far, please be sure to like, sub, and ring that notification bell to stay updated for future content. Also be sure to check out my Twitch at twitch.tv slash gamepersonal 6. Not only do I play the games you see here, but I play a lot of other fun games like Valorant, Honkai, and It Takes Two Solo. And one more, we have our Discord, the Gamer Person Party. Come hop in and have a place to talk with people of similar interests. There's personalized notifications, chat rooms, and even a suggestion channel where you yourself can contribute to the growth of our channel. Come join the Gamer Person Posse. I'll be ecstatic of your arrival. If you ever remember the days when you weren't one-shotting bosses with a free and a boosted, cause a swirl, Bennett buff, burst, and all that, you'll remember that Devalin gets really mad once you don't kill him during his first heal break. He shouts to the sky and breaks the ground beneath you, dealing damage over time if you step on him. It's very easy to avoid, just take the wind current and fly over to another platform, but this is just the beginning of something even worse. If you didn't know, Devalin has an internal timer to make sure the fight gets along quickly. It's tied to either the number of shield breaks you cause or how long you've actually been fighting. But my idea isn't that weak, so it's the shield breaks we're basing our doomsday clock on. We all know what happens after one. He breaks three platforms centered on you. But I think you can't guess what happens at two. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Those out there who guess something are wrong. The next big thing happens at three shield breaks. He breaks the ground once again, but this time you can ensure you don't take a single chip damage. See, there are nine platforms in the domain, and three become dangerous after the first shield break. If you run to the right, these three platforms will be broken next. If you run to the left, it'll be these three. The broken platforms will always stick together. That means if you run to either one of these far platforms, you'll only need to travel one more to stay safe. Just make the journey when the floor isn't lava for Dia's sake. But note that once the next three get broken, there's only three platforms safe. And unfortunately, if you're really bad at video games, Devalin will eventually grant you mercy and break all nine platforms. That essentially means instant death, which is lucky for us that this only happens after six shield breaks. That's why we want to deal more than a sixth of his health each shield break, because then we'll be on track to defeat him in the nick of time. Even if the path to victory seems pretty clear, there's still a lot of hazards and roadblocks we need to watch out for. For example, there's the issue of unfair hitboxes. Make sure to give him ample space. You don't need a rush, you're already doing terrible damage anyway. I've seen myself placed completely off when Devalin goes down. This happens whenever you deal the final blow to a shield when you're at the very edge of the platform, usually when you're attacking his talents during his atomic blast. You won't be able to complete the entire combo, so keep yourself away from the sides. Then there's the whole deal of new attacks. Yes, he has more than just these three. There's this one where he shoots you two, then two air missiles. They do fly at you, but they're not homing at all. You can literally walk out of the way. Do not worry too much about it. There's also this attack, where he flies into the really background and charges up a Kamehameha. If you take to the skies, you can dodge the entire attack. Alright, that should be all of his new attack. Wait, what? that. Even I was taken surprised when he pulled this out, and I was the one who planned for this challenge. Once you've broken his shield four times, he casts down rain from the clouds above and turns the playing field into an active missile war zone. It's really pesky too. Not only does it only turn off when Devalin's down, but it has wildly inaccurate hitboxes. You can see why most of my runs die here. The only good redeeming quality of this is that it doesn't immediately one-shot you. But still, their presence alone will make this challenge 10 times harder. You really need to double down on the waiting game. Once you hear the rings fizzle in, stop whatever you're doing and look around. If the circle spawn even the tiniest bit close to you, you better pack your bags and travel over to a safe spot. And make sure it really is safe. Those missiles don't care if you're in Miami. The shockwave from Tallahassee will still kill you. I'm not kidding when I said they won't go away until you break his shield. They'll be spitting down every 10 seconds on, on every platform in the domain. I guess you could slim your chances of getting hit by riding a wind current but hey, just do whatever you need to do to not get hit. And that's really it. Wow, it's been a while since I've had a boss that was so straightforward. Scaramouche had the instant death bomb, Chalent had three phases, and Arlequino had the forsaken bond of life, but Devalin's just Devalin. Nonetheless, you still need to treat this run with care. Don't take chances, play it slow, and give his weak point all you've got. And if you space your damage well enough, you'll see that defeating Devalin with only a level one Dia is a mission complete. Oh no.
Or you could just farm better artifacts to actually kill him within six shield breaks. That works too. And hey, if you want to see me put myself through unnecessary perils again, you should check out this playlist and the following video. Thank you for watching, and until next time, have a good day, night, etc.